Hey, what's up you guys? I'm back. So, uh, I think I owe you guys a little bit of an explanation, okay? So, um, I'd be lying if I said I was busy this whole time. I kind of took like two months off and I didn't tell you guys, so apologies for that. But uh, to be honest, I just needed a break for my own mental health. Um, as you guys know, everything is kind of down in the markets, right? Stocks, crypto, you name it. So, uh, it just... Uh, seems like a bad time to be a finance youtuber to be honest uh, However, with that being said though, um, I do want to continue this channel So I'm still committed. And I'm still dedicated uh, To the goal of financial independence retire early and I do think that I provide uh, a lot of value for you guys right with the uh, you know news whether it be uh, news or just you know general content or general knowledge uh, So I still want to continue this channel, which is why um, I'm back now uh, so I'm going to try and uh, amp up the pace of videos once again. Um, now, yeah, what a time to be back though. Uh, because if you have been paying attention to the news recently, uh, you'll notice that we're witnessing in real time the collapse of the second biggest uh, cryptocurrency exchange in the world named FTX. Uh, so uh, let me give a summary of what has happened so far. Uh, and at the end of the video, I'm also going to share my thoughts about what's going on. So uh, keep in mind, I'm filming this on November the 11th, uh, which is, um, you know, the situation is still developing because it just happened a couple of days ago and it's still, things are still coming out of the woodwork and there's still, uh, it's a volatile situation all around. So uh, some info might be uh, out of date by the time you see this video uh, or some like more news might have come out that I don't know yet. So Anyways, uh, let's jump into it though. Uh, first of all, what happened? Uh, so, uh, it all started a few weeks ago when a crypto news site called Coindesk uh, apparently leaked the balance sheet of FTX. Uh, so, uh, the balance sheet of FTX apparently was consisted mostly uh, or a large part uh, with FTT tokens. Uh, now, FTT tokens is, is a token that's uh, FTX made themselves. It's called the FTX token. The ticker symbol is FTT. Uh, so basically, it's a token that they made themselves where I think if you hold a large amount of them, you can get extra interest and stuff like that. You can like stake it, right? So it's basically like a made up coin that they uh, made themselves. Uh, but yeah, the problem is that the value of FTT is really unclear. Like you can buy it and sell it, but you know, honestly, who's going to really use it? Um, because like unless you're uh, a customer on FTT, right? Uh, so basically, uh, rumor has it that the FTT token, though, uh, was being used as collateral for you know all the other like kind of shady dealings that FTX was doing. Um, so it looked like the um, FTT token was being used as collateral uh, for uh, stable coins, like you know uh, for stable coin loans uh, and for BTC and uh, ETH loans, and customer uh, funds were being loaned out. Um, so, uh, also, it looks like there was a fight between uh, the Binance CEO, CZ, uh, and the FTX CEO, Sam Bankman-Fried, uh, which uh, people know him as SBF for short. Uh, so, apparently, SBF and CZ had some beef from before. Uh, basically, SBF uh, spent a ton of money uh, lobbying U.S. regulators uh, and trying to influence politics. Uh, and a part of that was to, you know, just accrue more power for himself. And also he wanted to get CZ and Binance banned or something. I'm not entirely caught up on that. So I'm, I'm not privy to the details. So apparently there was some dispute, apparently. Um, but uh, Binance is the world's largest crypto exchange, okay? So you know how I said earlier that FTX was the second largest? Uh, well, Binance is the largest and CZ decided to go all out war, basically. Uh, so CZ had, uh, or Binance as a company, uh, had invested into FTX before. Uh, and as a result, um, they had some FTT tokens uh, just in reserve on, on Binance. Uh, so, you know, since... Uh, you know, SBF and CZ are not friends anymore and they're fighting. Uh, CZ's just like, I'm just going to dump everything. Uh, and it also like partly due to the, you know, Coindesk balance sheet leak is CZ was like, okay, I'm not comfortable holding the FTT token because I think it's worthless basically. Uh, so he announced this on Twitter though. Uh, so uh, this was like a public thing, right? So everyone saw that tweet uh, and they started panicking because they knew that the FTT token was going to drop and then 
in turn, that meant that uh, there might be issues with the FTX exchange. Uh, so people start doubting the FTX exchange's health. Um, now, this wouldn't be a problem if FTX had all their customer deposits backed one to one. Uh, but basically, at this point, like nobody knew anything, but you know, people were just panicking and withdrawing crypto from FTX, uh, and uh, this in turn caused a bank run, right? So. Um, the founder of SBF, uh, the founder of FTX, SBF, uh, also owned investments. Uh, he owned an investment firm called Alameda Research, uh, and it looked like he had taken the funds, like the customer deposits from FTX, given them to Alameda, and then received FTX, uh, FTT tokens uh, as collateral. So again, that's a like a useless coin, and the value of it is really questionable, right? Uh, so as FTT began to plummet. Uh, you can see where the problem is, right? Uh, so uh, FTX couldn't really get rid of the FTT tokens and fulfill the customer deposits and change them back into Bitcoin, Ethereum, stable coins, uh, or just cash or whatever it is. Uh, so basically they ran out of liquidity uh, and, and the FTT token also plunged in price, so it became worthless. Uh, so FT, uh, FTX did not have the customer deposits anymore and the FTT tokens. Uh, were just um, it, it went to like two dollars. It, it was like twenty something dollars, and then it just went to two dollars. Uh, so basically, FTX was forced to halt all withdrawals. And earlier today, we got the news that FTX US, uh, FTX.com, and Alameda Research, and there was like over a hundred affiliated companies that are related to either FTX or Alameda. Um, they're all filing for bankruptcy. Uh, so FTX by itself uh, during its last funding round was worth over 30 billion dollars and basically it just all went to zero practically overnight. Uh, so uh, it also came to light that FTX uh, currently has a 9.4 billion dollar hole in their balance sheet. Uh, so just, just let that sink in. That's like a mind bogglingly large amount of money, right? So like every one of you, uh, including myself, like who's watching this video and myself who's making this video, if we add up all our wealth together and we add up all the wealth that we will make for the remainder of our lives, there's a good chance we wouldn't even, like it wouldn't even be a tenth of that, right? Like $9.4 billion, like that's how much money that, uh, that was missing. Uh, and what it looks like was that, again, this money was lent out, like this money was uh, customer deposits and it was lent out to Alameda Research and then Alameda, their traders, SBF, they gambled it and they lost it. That's basically what it looks like. Again, allegedly, right? So we're still waiting for the um, final like confirmation, but this is what the reports look like. Uh, so um, yeah, in fact, it was announced earlier this week that uh, Binance was actually going to try to acquire FTX. Uh, but then Binance actually walked away from that deal because they took a look at the balance sheet and saw the $9.4 billion hole. And I doubt Binance has $9.4 billion just lying around. So they're like, we can't help you, right? So uh, yeah, I think it's, it, honestly, I don't want to sugarcoat it. Uh, it sucks if you have money on FTX. And if you do, I'm sorry, but it, it is looking pretty hopeless. And it's doubtful that you'll get any money back uh, if you have funds stuck on FTX. Uh, at this point, uh, just because the hole is so large that they can't possibly, like, no one can help them, right? Like, why? And and even if they could, why would they, right? Like, if BlackRock like came in, like, I'm sure BlackRock has like ten billion dollars, but why would they want to spend ten billion dollars on a brand that's just like ruined, right? Because everyone thinks of like SPF and FTX as like being frauds. Um, so yeah, basically, it's pretty hopeless now, uh, unfortunately. Um, and this is the story so far, right? So uh, the biggest shocker for me is the sheer amount of irresponsibleness and uh, allegedly uh, what looks uh, like outright fraud uh, by Sam Bankman-Fried. And I browse on Twitter sometimes and I think that a lot of people are blaming CZ uh, for dumping the FTT token, which quote unquote triggered the crash. Uh, but think about it this way, guys. If uh, FTX didn't gamble with their users' money and actually held uh, everything one-to-one, -one, then they could have fulfilled all the withdrawals. And it doesn't matter if the FTT token dumped. Uh, it's because they were loaning out uh, users' funds and using FTT as collateral. That's the problem. 
Uh, and I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, wait a minute, isn't this what banks do, right? Like if I have $100, I take it to the bank. The bank doesn't keep all of it, right? They loan it out. Uh, well, yes. However, when a bank goes bankrupt, a uh, bank is heavily regulated. So when a bank goes bankrupt, uh, the federal government, if you're in a country like Canada, United States, uh, or like most of Europe, um, when a bank goes bankrupt, the federal government will step in and help you, right, and bail you out, uh, and it's it's insured. Uh, but when it comes to crypto, it's all different. So when uh, it comes to crypto, you know, in the FTX situation like this, you're just out of luck. Uh, and uh, FTX was also supposed to bail out Voyager, uh, who is another... A crypto company a crypto exchange that went bankrupt earlier this year uh, and yeah now that's definitely not happening anymore because FTX themselves went bankrupt uh, so uh, also BlockFi uh, pretty much had all their users funds on FTX uh, at least that's what I'm hearing for the reports uh, so BlockFi has paused all withdrawals and it looks like BlockFi will also file for bankruptcy uh, and by the time you watch this video probably they would have filed already uh, and yeah admittedly I was playing around with some crypto lending platforms like Celsius and BlockFi previously uh, I lost some money on Celsius not a lot uh, but enough to learn my lesson uh, it was less than 5% of, of my crypto bank but you know, like it still hurts to lose 5%, right? Um, so yeah, after that, I withdrew everything from BlockFi because luckily BlockFi still allowed withdrawals when Celsius went bankrupt. Um, so yeah, that was a disaster. And after that disaster, I basically keep 0% on exchanges and it's 0% it on like lending platforms. I, I don't trust lending platforms anymore. Uh, and yeah, if you're gonna be in crypto, um, don't be lazy, get a hardware wallet, okay? Or at the very least, get a non-custodial wallet. So um, there are apps uh, that you can use um, that are free. So if you don't want to spend $100, $200 to buy a hardware wallet, there are non-custodial apps. Uh, so the difference uh, between a custodial wallet and a non-custodial wallet is that uh, a non-custodial wallet will make you write down the seed phrase, right? So uh, by writing down the seed phrase, the seed phrase is the thing that controls the keys, like your crypto keys, right? So not your keys, not your coins, right? So you really do want to control your own keys and not just keep your crypto on an account with someone else. Like I use Exodus, uh, but I hear that uh, there's another one called Trust Wallet, which is also very good. But yeah, anyways, pick pick your favorite, but just... Uh, get your crypto off of lending platforms and get your crypto uh, off of exchanges. Um, as for me personally, I did not have an FTX account. Uh, so thankfully, I was not directly uh, impacted. Uh, however, um, I'm indirectly impacted because the entire market is crashing and who knows how many other companies are going to go bankrupt, uh, right? Because the thing is, if you look at Adam e uh, Alameda, uh, the firm that was owned by SPF, uh, who's the founder of FTX and Alameda, um, they were involved with business dealings with a lot of different companies. Uh, in the crypto space, like Galaxy Digital, Sequoia Capital invested in them, uh, and even the famous uh, football player Tom Brady, who has like what, like six hundred million dollars on FTX. At least that's the rumor. I don't know if it's true. Um, that's what I'm hearing. Uh, but yeah, apparently Tom Brady is gonna lose a massive amount of money um, because of this FTX implosion. Um, so yeah, and not to mention millions of clients, right, who basically lost 100% of their deposits, whatever they had uh, on FTX. Uh, and there's also rumors that SBF, the uh, founder, Sam Bankman-Fried, Sam Bankman-Fraud, right, uh, basically he was uh, coaxing his employees to try and invest in FTX stock. Again, this is a rumor, so it could be true, it could not be true, but, uh, you know, that's that's what I'm hearing, that... Uh, SBF uh, basically uh, had this like huge deal uh, going on uh, last year where he uh, had the employees like he gave employees the opportunity to invest in FTX at a 50% discount uh, on FTX stock. So FTX is not a publicly traded company. So um, if you're an insider or if you're an employee, that's the only way for you to get shares or if you're an investment firm. Uh, who like you know funded them in their seed rounds right but there's no way for the general public to invest in them so that kind of uh, gives like the illusion of scarcity so all the employees are like oh we get to invest in this great company 
um, for a 50% discount. And obviously, the general like rank and file employees, they didn't know about all the shady dealings that were happening between Alameda and FTX, right? So they were like kind of duped, right? Let's be honest, um, into investing in FTX. And like, you know, a lot of people put like hundreds or even millions of dollars in, and now that's basically gone to zero. Um, so yeah, anyway, some personal thoughts for the last part of this video. Uh, first of all, I know the critics are going to jump out of the woodwork right now, okay? So uh, it's really easy for someone to come to the conclusion that all crypto is bad uh, and that if you buy crypto, you're an idiot and all crypto is a scam or they're all positive schemes or whatever. And I know people are going to call me names and have comments exactly like that uh, down in the comments uh, below in this video. Uh, and if that's what you think, there's probably nothing I can say that will change your mind. Uh, but what I have to say to that is uh, what I think is important uh, is if you're willing to think a little deeper and not have this like simple minded knee jerk reaction that all crypto is bad. Um, what I recommend is that you separate the technology of blockchain uh, versus the companies that run it, right? So companies um, are run by people and people are fallible and they're greedy, right? And, you know, definitely what we see with uh, SBF, he's, you know, uh, hubris is his downfall, right? Uh, and the purpose of uh, crypto is to have um, payment rails that are fast, secure, and decentralized. And this whole FTX crisis happened because like it wasn't decentralized, right? A lot of this like thing that um, a lot of these issues that crop up in crypto uh, with this FTX crisis is because we had this company that was super powerful uh, and SPF and allegedly a small like inner circle as well. It wasn't just him by himself, but like, you know, the people at Alameda and like, you know, certain groups uh, of people uh, that are high up, including SPF, um, controlled everything. Uh, in the company, right? And, you know, that's that's where the issue comes. Uh, and also another fundamental uh, principle of crypto was violated. Uh, and that fundamental crypto uh, principle is don't trust, verify. Uh, and a lot of people invest in FTX and Alameda or gave uh, like, you know, millions of dollars. And I'm, by people, I mean like venture capitalists and firms with huge amounts of money. I don't mean just like people like you and me. Uh, a lot of companies and VCs invested a huge amount of money into FTX and Alameda uh, without really doing their due diligence properly. They didn't ask for collateral or they didn't ask for enough collateral. They didn't do their due diligence to actually uh, check the company structure. Uh, people just trusted FTX because they're a $30 billion company. So like what could go wrong, right? Well, you know, a lot could go wrong. Uh, so uh, what's happening with FTX, though, uh, it does not invalidate the technology of blockchain. That's the main point I'm trying to make uh, is that the prices of cryptocurrency will for sure be negatively impacted in the short term uh, because of this. Uh, and people are panicking and people are selling. Uh, but just like the dot com bubble, when it burst, uh, there's a lot of tech companies that went down 90 percent. Right. Uh, but that does not mean that all tech stocks are bad. Uh, so uh, Amazon actually went down uh, over 90% during the dot-com bubble burst. Uh, so uh, does that mean that Amazon is a bad company, right? So there are like actually good projects and good technology that is being built. Uh, and, you know, this FTX crisis, yes, it is really bad, but it, it doesn't invalidate those, right? Um, it, should we not have been investing uh, in tech for the past 10 years just because of the uh, you know, a dot com bubble burst, right? Uh, so, uh, with this being said, if you again, if you have funds stuck on FTX, my condolences. Uh, this is definitely a black mark on the industry for sure. And uh, there's not really any way for me to sugarcoat this. Uh, I'm just shocked and appalled at this uh, FTX crisis, and I'm so disappointed uh, at this unacceptably high amount of fraud that's going on in the crypto industry. Uh, something really do. Uh, need to change right so like in the short term it, it's gonna it's gonna suck like i i don't know how else to to say it right but uh, i'll still be around and um yeah i'll still keep you guys updated to this whole evolving situation uh but yeah if you have any thoughts and comments please leave them down below uh and yeah i'll see you guys in the next video Bye bye